On this episode of History Hunters, I'll be checking out the historic Placerville Union Cemetery to find some noteworthy graves from the town's pioneer era. So I made a little stop here in the Placerville Union Cemetery to see if I can find just a couple of historical graves. I think I know where a couple are. And one of them is over here. So we drove in, there was a little sign here detailing that there's a historical figure buried here. Frederick Sieg was born in Germany in 1814 and died in Placerville in 1885. He owned the Herrick House, which is a hotel, restaurant, saloon, and bakery on Main Street. Here's Mr. Sieg. This is what he looked like. He was the past National Grand Arch, who was the chief druid or leader of the grove. And right here has a plaque here honoring his memory. It says native of Germany, died August 14th, 1888, 73 years old. I am virtually assured that this cemetery is crawling with historical figures. This one over here is vandalized. Mr. Cleese has been knocked off the foundation. The one grave that I wanted to find, I rolled right past it, so we're going to go up here. It's uh, Frederick Adams. Here's the grave of Frederick Adams. Somebody's left some money on the grave. As you know, that's a remembrance. The reason I picked him out is he was a veteran of the Mexican-American War. This little display here at the cemetery actually has a picture of Judge Adams. When Idaho became a territory, Abraham Lincoln appointed him the first federal judge in that state. Let's just go over here and find a couple more graves. This one looks very old. Giuseppe Roleri, no doubt native of Italy, died in San Francisco in 1883. I wonder if he is a relative of Jimmy Roleri, the guy who shot Black Bart down in Copperopolis. Here's a pretty old grave. Noah Hale Cohen died in 1877. This one is so old that it's worn down to virtually nothing. Noble W. Mountain, very unusual name. Sounds like a place of a ski lodge. It's a member of the 2nd Iowa Cavalry. That's a Civil War grave. Native of Pennsylvania. Member of the Placerville Post of the GAR. H. Gaterman, rest in peace. Native of Hamburg, Germany. I think it's so cool to see these old gravestones. How today, basically, you get a flat plaque made out of bronze, nothing this elaborate. Here we go with another Civil War grave, this one of Charles Jordan. He was a member of the H Company, the 19th Michigan Infantry. This kind of drives home the point that a lot of people who fought in the Civil War came out here to California to mine for gold, hoping to get rich. Unfortunately, a lot of the bad elements from the East Coast made their way out here. So a lot of people were stealing from the gold miners and trying to make a quick way to make a buck by stealing the hard efforts of people who were out breaking their back trying to find the gold in here in California. It was not easy to find. In fact, a lot of people found out that it was such miserable work, back breaking work, they decided, hey, since I'm in California, I'll go into business or I'll actually go back to farming farm down in the Central Valley of California. They went down to areas like Stockton, grew wheat. Oscar Cozan, Company F, the 8th California Infantry, the Spanish-American War. This gentleman died in 1953. So this grave over here really caught my eye because of the fact that somebody left some glasses on top of the grave. But also for the fact that this same stone, but this Amelia died in 1968. Robert looks like died in 1907. So she went 61 years without her husband, it looks like. But you can see the difference in the weathering of the stone. This carved in 1907, this carved in 1968. That's really interesting about that back there. This is definitely a historical name from Placerville, Cumbalac. They were merchants on Main Street. William died in 1929. There's John Walters, who died in 1928. John Morris, a native of Wales, who died in 1912. Again, here's a testament to the fact that there were a lot of German immigrants in the Motherlode. 
Here's Magdalena Eidinger, who died in 1885. Her stone outlasts any human memory of her, known only to God. This one, been knocked off its pedestal, 1876. There's a rose on it. There's a lot of Mason members, Masonic members here. This grave of the Peltons caught my eye. Here's Isabel Pelton, who was born in 1844 in Quebec, Canada. Died in 1885. Here's some natives of England. The Bolden brothers, Thomas and William, died in 1910 and 1911. There's a sad little grave of somebody I can't read. 1875. 1871. Five-year-old. Look at this piece of it right here. The cemetery bears the grave of Deputy Sheriff Joseph Staples, who was shot to death on July 1st, 1864, while trying to apprehend stagecoach robbers. Earlier in the day, while visiting Main Street in Placerville, we stumbled across a plaque which tells the story of stagecoach robberies, which led to the death of the lawman. On the evening of June 30th, 1864, two stages were robbed east of Placerville by bandits who demanded the Wells Fargo strong boxes and sacks of gold bullion. They announced they were Confederate soldiers raising funds for the Confederacy. Fast on their trail, Deputy Sheriff Joseph Staples and two constables confronted some of the lawmen at the Somerset House. In the ensuing gun battle, Staples was mortally wounded. Suspect Joseph Poole was wounded and captured. After he was convicted of the murder of Deputy Staples, Poole swung from the end of a rope in Hangtown on September 29, 1865. James Baldwin once wrote, People are trapped in history, and history is trapped in them. There's really no place that represents history like a cemetery. These sacred grounds, which bear the bones of those who made history, are for us to reflect the past, to stir curiosity. Despite their erasure from the human scene, the etched engravings on wood and stone bear witness to human souls who contributed to their communities a long time ago.